Hey, if you'd like to see some Firebird restoration videos step by step from the very beginning, every nut and bolt, you are at the right place. This is the Firebird restoration station. My name is John. I always say this the stars are the cars. We've got a couple of birds here in the garage in progress, but what we're messing with here today is 1968 fire we call the Great Pumpkin. Um, completely gutted this car, working on putting it all back together now. Got a whole playlist of the whole thing if you want to check it out from the very beginning, because I did drive this thing in the garage, but she needs a lot of love, and that's why it's here. Uh, but today's project, we're going to get the rear axle stabbed back underneath this beautiful bird without scratching any of the paint, because the underside is painted actually nicer than the top right now, and I like to keep it that way. So i got some ideas to get this thing. i got some springs all doctored up, ready to go. The rear axle's already been sandblasted and painted and ready to go. So I need to find a way to fight gravity and get that back up in the garage. I actually may have my dad maybe come by today to give me a hand too. So maybe we can get this in without doing any damage to the old finish on things. So if you like to see how that goes, stick it around and check this thing out. Well, let's get started. What we're working with, leaf spring, differential axle assembly all painted and pretty and the leaf spring and then the installation kit that i have purchased comes with the rear spring mounts that tie the leaf spring to the body or the frame this kit came with all u-bolts i kind of like the ones with two u-bolts and the uh, four t-bolts but this will work just fine for what we're doing here today these are the front bolts that attach the spring mounts to the leaf springs these are your rubber insulators go between the axle and the leaf spring and then the usually bolt that oh i know where this goes actually thought i lost that just found it i'll share that goes here in just a minute now right, we're going to start with the spring shackle of course the leaf spring here's your hardware that goes through it i've got some grease here i'm going to put on the bolt for a couple reasons uh want we'll to keep it from corroding and sticking and sometimes they'll keep the thing a little bit quieter too over bumps so we're gonna put a little grease on it i'm gonna stab that bolt through here get that snugged up and tightened because unfortunately once it's installed you cannot gain access to tightness so you must kind of guess the angle and tighten it down first so let me get that thing stabbed through spring shackle is installed about 80 foot pounds i've torqued these things through one good ugga dugga next thing we're going to do is put the springs onto the rear axle here get the rubber bushings put into place and hopefully I have any problems. We got the other side there, and I got a helper hanging out today. That's my dad. He had conned him into getting dirty here in the old Vinyl Village garage. So hopefully, we'll be successful with a little hand and not scratching the paint. So next step here, we'll get these things mounted up. I'm gonna get a little up to speed here. Remember I was talking about this bolt here that was in that bag? Right now my dad is working on putting a little grease. As you guys know, who built these cars before. These are the front three bolts that hold the shackle to the body, and they like to seize up. So not a bad idea. Anti-seize, grease, or something that would help keep moisture out. And now in case you ever have to take this thing back apart, you don't have those hidden bolts twisted off inside the body. I've also put some of the rims on the car. Um, it's going to help. We're basically going to put the springs on it. It'll kind of roll real nice underneath the body. Uh, so hopefully the idea is of not scratching anything. So the next thing we're going to have to do now, i got the spring all secure there. Both shackles are installed. We're going to put this spring over and put it back underneath the axle and go ahead and mount it to the axle then. There's only one little spot is more than likely an irregularity on that. On the U-bolt. Yeah, on the U-bolt thread. Yeah. Yeah. It should have just enough drag to actually kind of turn into a lock nut. And you, yeah, yeah, that's huh. all I want to do. You never done it that way before? No, no, I've staked them off the top, but that makes more sense. That's easier. There, there, it's, yeah, it's, if I, yeah, it's still just, a, wouldn't, wouldn't hurt to have just a little more. Yeah, it's something we did at the railroad. Oh, shoot. I think oh, that yeah. one's... I think this one's good. Good at where it's at. All right, we got everything all staged. Learn how to make some lock nuts now. That's a pretty cool trick. Now, the differential, I've got the yoke supported there. Like I said, the wheels are on. We're going to get the spring rust into place. And we've got hiding underneath the uh, abracadabra rags or just a couple of our old bricks. Now, the rags are on here so I don't scratch out the paint on the springs. What we're going to do, we're going to grab that spring, I'll slip it here under the axle, then we're going to use the bricks to actually just put some weight on, I guess, where the axle is sitting on the spring, so the wheel almost basically come off the floor just a little bit, so that's what I want you to see. That's the next step. We're going to wrestle some, get the spring in here, because we want a little bit of a weight, because these rubbers just don't want to stay in the place. You try to put it up here in the axle, they just fall right back out. They don't have enough friction. And I just think it's a lot easier to use the weight of the axle to kind of get it all together. So next thing here, I'll put the camera up. We'll get the spring wrestled into place. You'll see how this works. All right. Here goes a whole lot of nothing, right? I got it. Oh, I got the spring mount in the way. I want to shoot through here. It's a little higher. Go under the axle 
here. Free of cable. Yeah, parking brake cable. Yeah. Now I've got that into place. Well, those don't fit that great you know, oh. on top of the leaf and yeah. they will stay there. Yeah. Now you go ahead and pick the spring up. Hopefully the idea is that will go up in there instead of lift the axle. Oh well, that's tight. That's, that's good. On that other one. Now we'll go a little higher on that end and put that brick in. Okay, that'll work. Now I'll do this. Hopefully it'll pick up the axle. It's probably a little closer in with the brick last time. Yeah. The, uh, yeah, we need to go. Looks the, like the rubber needs to come this way. Yeah. Well, the axle needs to go back. There it is. Now we're centered. That'll work. So, as you can see, the rim's off the floor, so the weight is here on our brick. So the axle pushing on that rubber, getting it lined up with the stud. Hopefully, if that works right. I'm gonna drop my U bolts in. And then, same thing. Now these are recycled spring perches. They're the originals off the car. The shock mount goes towards the outside world. Put the rubber on here. And as long as I got this right, hopefully my U-bolts will line right up. Well, I think so. That one went right through. Now at this point, it's gonna get the nuts started and just run through where they're about flush with the stud. That way if I need to wiggle it around, we gotta adjust the axles a little bit we'll get a square to the body. That was started. Now the, I guess what Dad was telling me, using that technique, the railroad techniques we're gonna call that, the, um, it takes a little more finesse to get the nut started, so use use caution. You could cross start it pretty easily, but it's definitely a different feel. Once you get it on there, it goes right into place. So I'm gonna get these snugged up and I'll show you guys the next step. All right, that side's all squared away. Went ahead and got the passenger side done just the same. What we're gonna do next here, these are the rubber shackle bushings to go in the rear. Go ahead and grease those up with some grease on the face and everything. Get them pressed into the spring. And here up inside the body, you have the same little spots up there of course it's kind of hard to see it but you know what, what i'm talking about so we're gonna put all four of those bushings in now uh, the once you get the bricks out from underneath this axle i can roll this thing underneath the car nice and easy and then we'll get the front spring mounts mounted to the body all right we got a little rubber bushings installed grease those things up pressed right into place not too bad getting ready to roll this thing underneath here but same thing those are pressed into place got the red grease all over them but now you can see what we've got set up is Gonna mount those front mounts up inside the body. Now I've got the axle set up here. We just pick it up and it, it rolls really nice on the rims. So that was the idea. So hopefully, I'll move my brick and chunk of wood here. We'll roll this thing into place and get the bolt started on the front mounts. And then we'll pick the axle up into place. Okay. Is it going to go my way? Yeah, i got to get the end of it past the jack stand. There we go. Okay. Are we deep enough on that side? Yeah, I think so. All right. Pretty close. Yeah. You got the front one started? It's counting. All right, what we're gonna do is stab a bolt in the front. Now, I won't be able to get all three bolts in yet, but we get the front one in. It should handle the weight of the axle here. Well, that's starting by hand. That ought to work pretty good now. Well, so I thought. Inject it. Try that one more time. 
Well, you know, this side looks like it's hitting that lead up. Shock out. Yeah, I'm gonna be about an eighth inch short for grabbing the threads. Well, oh, yeah. hmm. So close. Should have brought the jack stands down one notch. Well, if I wasn't holding the camera, I'd come around there and, <laughs> and, and I lift up on the back or something a little bit. I think I got it. You got it to go now? Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, good deal. Yeah, this bite is nice and easy, so I just wasn't holding my mouth for it, I guess. Yeah. It was close. Okay, now, with those being in place. Yeah, I didn't run this one down tight, but it's got several turns, so I yeah, know that it's... It's going to handle the weight now. Yeah. That's good. Yeah. All right, I'll see if I can't sneak this. Oh, yeah. Okay. Back up a little bit. Okay, up there. I say we send her up. Hold this out of the way. Yeah. Check out. Now, I'll leave this thing all the way up in the place. These will tuck up inside the body. Should be able to get the front other two bolts started. And so far, no casualties. Go ahead and get these in there. That's probably pretty close. You want me to stop? Yep, yeah, hang out there. We'll get these. Uh, oh, tight fit. All right, just so you can see what I'm talking about here. Now the orientation of that one was like this, because he's got enough room here inside the quarter panel. This side just wouldn't happen with the bolts being inspection way, but the trunk drop off won't allow the bolt, so it has to go this direction. But it's just really snug fit. Just keep working that thing into place, then we'll finish lifting the axle. But to, uh, well, about two more, three more inches to get us there. Okay. Oh. Now you can see here. Now the thing about these springs, this bolt here is the one that kind of sets the depth of the axle forward and back. That's the one I use when I put the frame rails on the frame jig. That's what actually kind of sets everything. So there really isn't a whole lot of adjustability to the axles on these cars, but you can eh, finagle the rubber bushings on the axles. So we're gonna take a measurement here from the rocker to the wheel, see how square we are if I torque the U-bolts U -bolts down on the rear axle here. But in the meantime, I'll get these three snugged up. Let me go a little more there and see what happens. Okay, I got a thread caught on the top one. So just the bottom one then? And now it's just the bottom one. But the height should be good if you got the top one. But I think they got to be pretty close if I can get this, since I got the top one in. Yeah, yeah. man. Okay. Or... All right, what I'm doing here, you can see it's lined up, studs poking through, get the nut started, and then there we go.
sticking out past the square of the bullet head. Oh, yep, yep. So you don't have enough length. I don't have enough length with the bullet. Yeah. All right. Oh. What we've got there is a popped out of it. Then, so you so probably need to rotate. Come down some, maybe, or yeah, I guess it's real close. Oh, there we go. Okay. Oh, I heard something change. Yeah. That's it then. Yeah, I think so. Now we're stuck through, and I just get the nut started. Tape measure just touched the rim. This is the driver's side. We're We'll just call it right there at 10 inches. Now, that's the one I want to do is measure the, I guess, the dog tracking. Is the axle centered to the car body? Now, this is assuming that uh, you welded the rocker panels in, right? Car hasn't been crashed, etc., stuff like that. Now, I'll do the same thing here on the passenger side. He's not going to ball the bolts now, but we'll go ahead and do the same thing. Run it parallel to the body line. Oh, then we'll shoot it, slide it back. Nope. I think I just hit the rim there and Yeah, you were hitting the Oh, the yeah. Yes, sir. Okay. Square it up there to the end. I think it hits the rim there and Well, hold on a second. Hold the tape measure. Okay, got it. Is that touching the rim then? Just touching. Okay, well I'm gonna call that really Both good. It has to be the, the, the tape needs to be vertical on this end instead yeah, of Yeah, yeah, yeah. I got a twist to it, but Yeah, and that's gonna change that when it touches. Let's say just maybe uh, what sixteenth of an inch yeah, more. Yeah, it needs to go back your way a little. Actually, there. Oh. See, it's, it's 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 hitting the get rim right now. Okay, well that's ten. So that's ten. Ten. Yeah. Okay, well. What I was doing with that measurement, because like the rear axle, if it was say not centered in the car, one side might have been like nine and a half, the other one was ten and a half. That tells you the car, I've got the axle not square or center line to the body. Now those numbers being the same, wouldn't expect that exactly, but I'll take it. That's a win. This is a quick little reference, make sure you're good. The other thing you can also do, check the axle side to side. Is it centered in the car? Now that's something you can drop a plumb bob and measure the flange and make sure it looks square, but uh I wanted to make sure my axle wasn't set back or dog tracking, as you'll call it. This one's looking really good, so I'll go ahead and tighten up all the hardware. And I'm gonna say that rear axle install is complete and done. I'm gonna help vacuum the crud out here, get the garage kind of cleaned up, and get the next video going. Grab the camera, and uh, we will see you then.